Good morning, my friends. Welcome back. Hope you're having a great start to your day. You know, every once in a while, us gardeners, through the act of gardening, beautifying our landscape, planting out our crops, we come across a plant that becomes special to us, near and dear to our hearts. There's a lot of things that can cause this, but for me, it tends to be a plant that maybe surprises me that I didn't realize all the different uses that it may have. And so today I want to share with you one of those crops. I feel everyone should be growing it in their garden. Come check it out. So surprise, surprise. Today, we're going to be talking about the artichoke plant. We're back here in the corner of the yard where I've got a nice patch of artichoke growing. And these have perennialized beautifully in the garden. These are the beautiful flower heads that started off as edible globes that I allowed to go to flower. Then they become the seed heads. So every year I get a beautiful harvest of artichoke globes. Really a gourmet food, a delicacy if you ask me. But I allow some of those globes to continue through maturity until they get to the flower stage. And if you've never seen an artichoke flower, I'm going to throw up a picture. They're absolutely stunning. A really electric blue purplish flower. It attracts plenty of bees, butterflies, even praying mantis, a very beneficial insect to have in the garden, is attracted to the artichoke. So originally my intention was to grow the artichoke simply for the globes. I love artichokes. Artichoke hearts, the petals themselves are really a treat. They're also loaded with vitamin C and very high in antioxidants by the way. But what happened in my particular situation is that because the artichoke every year puts up pups, little baby plants around the base of the mother plant. So you can see there's several plants now bunched up here. Well, you can separate those out and proliferate the plant out very easily in your garden. And because of that, I ended up growing a whole lot more artichokes than I had originally intended. And as a benefit, I found some other great uses for the artichoke. I'm going to share those with you on this video. And as you can see here, the plant isn't at its most beautiful point in life. We've got the dried up browning flower heads and some of the leaves are tattered and need to be cleaned up. But the plant does clean up very well. The way I generally do that is I remove the flower heads. They do have seeds in them. So if you don't want them to spread throughout your landscape, you can remove those from the garden. But all these leaves here make great chop and drop. So I can easily prune back the plant and create a lot of mulch for the garden. So yet another biomass plant, a great way to create copious amounts of mulch material, which then adds to the floor of my food forest garden and continually builds the soil, creates wonderful soil tilth. That's the structure of the soil. And these leaf materials, these organic plant materials that we keep adding on top of the soil that break down, become part of the profile. And over time, they can really help to amend poor quality soil, whether it's a heavy clay soil that has problems with drainage or just a soil that's void of life, maybe lacking earthworms. These type of materials are going to help to balance things out and create a beautiful growing medium like this. Now you see there's wood chips in here as well. Just another organic mulching material. Now another surprising discovery with the artichoke was my chickens and how they were attracted to the leaves, not all throughout the year, but a particular time of the year, they would go after and really enjoy consuming the artichoke leaves. So it makes a great animal fodder. By the way, there's a closely related plant in the same family known as cardoon. And this plant is typically grown for its edible ribs, its stalks. The leaves get much larger and it does create a similar flower head but no artichoke globe to consume. Now because the height of the artichoke is relatively low profile between three to five feet and can be easily controlled just by pruning off some of the leaves, I found it makes a wonderful understory to my fruit trees. By growing them this way, I'm accomplishing a couple different things. Number one, these leaves are blocking the sun throughout the summer from drying out the soil beneath so it's helping to keep things moist hoping to reduce manual watering and the cost associated with that. Also, as you can see here, the leaves 
are blocking the trunk of the tree. So it's helping to prevent what's known as sun scald. The reason you see a lot of younger fruit trees, especially painted white, or they have some sort of a cover over the trunk is to prevent that sun scald. And because of the dense planting around the base of the tree, it creates a nice little microclimate here, helping to almost insulate the trunk of the tree. So you don't have big swings in temperature, which can be very damaging and cause some of that splitting that you see on the trunk of the tree. Good morning, little birds. And personally, I find the artichoke to be quite ornamental. It's got a whimsical, showy appearance. And when it sways in the breeze, it just brings life into the garden. And because it's such a cold hardy, cold tolerant plant, it can bring a splash of color throughout the winter months. So let's talk about the cold hardiness for a moment. A lot of folks are under the impression that artichokes are more of a temperate climate crop. And although they are traditionally grown commercially in temperate areas like California, they actually have a cold hardiness. They can survive down to USDA climate zone five if taken care of properly. I'm gonna share with you different tips on ways to perennialize this crop. If you're more up north, if you get down to those extremely low freezing temperatures, but I'll say this, we've gotten down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit here and my plants survived. So I can vouch for them surviving without any other protection all the way down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. But in colder climates, there's a few different ways that you can go about protecting these plants and keep them going year after year. One way is to actually grow them in containers. They grow well in containers and you can bring them in in the winter into a greenhouse or even in a garage during the coldest part of the season. They don't even need any sunlight to survive over the winter and then bring them out the following spring when temperatures warm up a bit and continue to grow them. But if you want to try growing them in ground, common technique is to actually place a wire cage around the plant and surround it with mulch material, something like straw, even wood chips up at the base, maybe six inches high, and then something like straw around the rest of the plant. And the main thing is you keep the crown and the roots viable, but by doing it this way, you're more than likely going to keep even some of the leaves viable then you obviously are going to remove that as the weather warms up and Bob's your uncle. The last method is to actually dig up the plant out of the ground and once again you want to make sure that you've got the crown in one piece and as much of that root material as possible. You then want to shake off all the excess dirt so you've got a bare root plant. You could even hose it down a bit and then you want to place that in a dry medium something like coconut coir which you're probably going to have to hydrate it with water, but you don't want it damp, so you want to squeeze out the excess water once it's fluffed up. You can use coconut coir, you can use peat moss, and store several of these plants in a box. Put it in a cold area, like a garage, and again, let it overwinter, doesn't need sunlight, and you've got yourself a bare root artichoke to plant out the following spring. Alright, so I'm going to clean this plant up a bit, just so you guys can see how to beautify it. now. The old flowering stalks should just pull right out if you see that they're completely dry. And if they don't work themselves out, you can give it a little twist or you can use a tool like a hori hori and get down there, sock through it a bit and pull it out. transfer this one out so this is what you're looking to accomplish want to see some nice viable roots on there 
If you take your time, you can finesse it out. Could have preserved even more of these roots, but I found even just this amount does just fine for regrowing. Another little one back here that was hiding. And a younger little plant here. And now you can better see the structure and the beauty of the plant now that it's been cleaned up. So, if you're not yet growing artichokes, I'd highly recommend you look into it. The variety featured in today's video was the Green Globe. They're readily available at most nurseries. You can also get them online. So that's going to wrap up this video. If you're interested in learning more about the artichoke, I've got several videos that I've made on the topic. I'll include those in the description box below the video. Hope you check them out. So with that, I want to wish you all a great rest of your day. Until next time, this is Dan from PlantAbundance.com. Take care, I'll be talking to you again soon.